Today we're going to take a look at the Ecutech hardware for flashing the ECU of your vehicle. The most common interface device that is currently being used is the Ecutech Bluetooth interface. This allows you to flash the vehicle using your laptop and data log the vehicle using either a laptop or your iPhone or Android device. For Ecutech programming, you need three things. First is the interface that you see here. This allows you to connect to the vehicle. The second is the dongle. This allows you to run the software and apply the flash points. Third is the license and flash point system. This is the per car fee that allows the engineers who write the software to actually get paid. You only need one license per vehicle for the entire life of that vehicle as long as the ECU remains the same. At Zero Limit, we carry all of the Ecutech hardware, tunes, and flash points that you might need for a variety of import vehicles. The first step to using the software is to install it on your computer. Go to the ecutech.com slash downloads page to get the software and the drivers that you're going to need. Once you install it, run update and make sure to update the ROM library and software at least a couple of times to make sure that you end up getting everything. Your stock files will be located in the C Ecutech folder for the BRZ and the NC MX5 models. For the other models, you're going to need to contact your master tuner to obtain them. Once you have your software installed, we'll need to find out what ECU version is on your vehicle before we can send you a tune file. To do this, you'll need to open Pro ECU and then go to Tools, Detect Vehicle. In this case, we've already done this, so the list is going to be populated. But the first time you do it, it will take a few seconds and it'll then generate all the possible options for the car. Each platform is going to have different options. In this case, we're using a VA STI, so these are the ones that are available for this car. After the prompt comes up, you'll select Program ECU to bring up the programming dialog. On certain makes, you will be given the option to enter utility mode. On the 86 or the NCMX5, you don't have to do this, but on many of the other makes, this is necessary to communicate with the ECU. Once you enter utility mode, you'll want to select Read Registration Details, and then select Save Screenshot to File. Email us the screenshot so that we can see what ROM ID you'll need for your vehicle. Once you have completed this step, you can turn off the car. There's no need to program it until you receive the tuned file. You do have other options on the screen as well, and if Ecutech tells you that you have an unsupported or unrecognized file, the next step would be to run Ecutech Update again to make sure that you have all of the updates. If it still does not recognize it, then select Dump Details for Ecutech and follow the prompts to submit the file. Make sure to let us know if that is happening, that way we can keep an eye out for the updated ROM. If you are using a laptop, start by opening the ROM file where you will see a similar logging screen. To connect to the vehicle, select Map Access and begin logging by selecting Log to File. If there are any parts of the log that we need to pay particular attention to, you can use the Log Mark button to highlight that area. Usually this is just limited for troubleshooting. You can also open your last log as we are doing here. If you scroll down and open up some of the additional parameters, you'll see that there's quite a bit that we can look at but more is not always better. The more parameters you have, the slower the sample rate and the larger the log files become. So unless otherwise instructed, just stick to the default parameters and make sure to unselect any duplicates. The Log Viewer is an incredibly powerful tool and one of the great features of this software. You can see there's 2D and 3D views, including a map viewer that lets you see any specific trouble spots. Another area to pay attention to is the green bar at the top. If it is red, that you are not connected to the vehicle. It should be green when the interface is connected to the computer and connect it to the car. We also recommend that you take some time to familiarize yourself with the help files, especially if you intend to make a DIY tune on the platforms that support it. There are also additional features on some models, including being able to check emissions readiness.
The next thing we will look at is the ECU Connect application for the iPhone and the Android. Here we're using an iPhone version. You'll need to have the interface connected and the vehicle on. After that, go ahead and pair it with your phone and set the passcode. For this app, we're just going to show you the basics. Depending on the vehicle, you're going to have a lot of different options here. We're using an STI, and this is actually one of the ones that really doesn't have quite as many as, uh, say, a GTR or an 86. In addition to being able to use this device to flash the car, when you're using it on a phone, you have a lot of other options, such as being able to gauge performance, data log, check for engine codes, as well as also look at emissions readiness. Since this is an STI, the way the map switching works is through the SI drive button. On some of the other models, such as the MX-5, what you'll have is multiple modes that get switched in other ways, and in those models, you can actually change those modes through the Bluetooth app. We can also enable custom maps, which again, we can't do on the STI, but we can do it on the 86 and some of the other models. You can then create custom maps that allow you to create a slider or other ways of being able to input into the ECU itself using the app. You can actually leave this running as you're driving the car and you can tilt the phone that way you get a better view of all the parameters. The data logging is no less powerful on the phone as it is on the computer. You have a very high sample rate and you're able to select all the same parameters that you could get with the PC. Again, there's a lot of parameters that you have the option of logging. Well, you don't want to go overboard. A lot of these actually can be helpful for troubleshooting, even if it's not tune related. The next screen we're going to show you is the dashboard. This looks simple, but this is actually one of the more powerful parts of the software. Here we have a screen that we set up specifically for the STI. It gives us some of the very basic information that I personally like to see while I'm driving this car. We can see the amount of boost that we're running, that we can make sure we're not over boosting, the advanced multiplier, which gives us an overall indication of health, and we can also see the real-time knock counts and the temperatures. You can make custom dashboards, you can save and load them, and then you can go ahead and configure the gauges in any way that you like. The fact that you can have multiple pages is very helpful for being able to see different things based on how you're driving. Not only that, but you can actually log based off of these parameters. So if you're watching the gauges and all of a sudden you see something that looks a little bit strange, you can just go to your first screen, start the log, and then you can email that as you would any other log. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to our channel. This is a continuation of our Ecutech how-to series and we're going to be adding a lot more content to this in the near future.